people are very important. Of course, all my messages are important. Amen. I want to preach to you today a message that needs to be preached often, no less than once a year. How do I know the Bible is true? How do I know the Bible is the word of God? And so I'm going to give you some, maybe some different insights to answer the same question we've done in the past. The number one reason I believe the Bible is the true word of God Amen. is the Bible says so. Amen. Now that may seem odd for a Bible, a book to defend itself, but the greatest evidence that the Bible is the word of God. Amen. Amen. It's the Bible itself. Now, if you believe Jesus is the very son of God, then you must believe the Bible is the word of God. Amen. Because Jesus said it was. Amen. And if he lied about that, was wrong about that, deceived about that, he could not be the son of God, right? Because he has to be without error. So Jesus verified the Bible as the word of God. It might amaze you to know that Jesus quoted from three-fourths of the Old Testament. And out of 39 books, he quoted from 29 books. And a lot of people don't know that. I think he quoted from David and Psalms mostly. But he did quote from several other Bible uh, references. So Jesus, by virtue of his own mouth, he verified, authenticated the word of God, the Bible. Now, over and over, he made this statement. The scripture said, did you know the significance of that statement? Amen. I didn't. I had the Lord. That's why I love to study. Keep on studying. It's like the black man's hat to just keep accumulating. Right? Then how do you make that? I don't know, so, but it keeps accumulating. So that's how he made his hat. <laughs> anyway, the word scripture, it means inspired writing that's what the word scriptures mean so every time jesus said the scripture said he was saying the inspired writings of god Amen. so that's significant isn't it? inspired what's that mean inspired when you inspire you're breathing in when you expire you're breathing breath out Breath in, inspire. Breath out, in, uh, breath out, expire. The Bible is the God breathed book. The words of the Bible are containers of the breath of God. And that's very important. Jesus verifies and authenticates the scriptures. Turn with me to. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, probably one of our favorite on the inspiration of scripture. I want you to read this out loud with me. Everybody find it? I want you to read it out loud with me. 2 Timothy 3.16, you may know it by heart. Ready? Begin. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That is an all consuming verse. Amen. All scriptures, A L L. And I remind you that the New Testament was being written. So the Old Testament, you can't, people try to exclude the Old Testament. The main scriptures are talking about here in the Old Testament. So anyway, and he said the word, the word there, inspire, Greek word, theonoustos. It means God breathed. 
uh, inspiration, God breathed. It's the inspired or the breathed word of God. And notice four things here. And if you haven't already written these down, you should. Doctrine, that's what is truth or what is right. Or reproof, that's what's not right. Or correction, that's how to get right. Or instruction in righteousness, that's how to stay right. It covers it all, doesn't it? That what is right, what is not right, how to get right, how to stay right. You got it? All right. God breathed means true from the Holy God. God utters nothing but truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Nothing comes Amen. out of the mouth of God except the truth. Now, if it's not absolutely true and Jesus spoke it, then he could not be God because his deity rests upon truth. Amen. And that's why people try to disprove the Bible to disqualify Christ. Yeah. So stay with me now. Go to another great Bible inspiration passage. It's 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Very familiar. Knowing this verse, that no, verse 20, 21. No prophecy of the scripture. Right. It's a private interpretation. It didn't come from man. For the prophecy came not at all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved or inspired by the Holy Ghost. And look at chapter 3, verse 2, I think it is, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the Holy Prophet and the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. So these are verified by God. They were inspired from God. So we see that here. He is the God of truth because God cannot inspire error. Amen? Amen. He cannot. So holy men of God, they wrote as they were led by the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, we now have in possession the written word of God. And I want to show you how important that is. It's so important, so important, people, that the word of God is written, it's recorded, and it's preserved Amen. by God. Amen. Now, the more important something is, the more you want to have a written document. For example, buying a house. You want to buy a house just on say so? No. You want, I swear, when we bought our house, we had to sign a hundred different papers. That was insane to me, but anyway, it's sure documented. I don't, I wouldn't be surprised it on there how many times I went to the bathroom every day. It covered up. That's unbelievable. Well, at least a, a hundred pages. I thought they would never stop handing me papers to write. So you've been through that. But anyway, the more important something is, the more you want it documented. You want it written down and, and so forth. Amen. So that's where you get that saying, put it in writing. Put it in writing. Okay. So we know the Bible is the word of God. That's why the court accepts written documentation where it won't, repeat, won't accept just verbal testimony. It's written down. It's written down like receipts and proof and so forth. So the Bible is the word of God because it says so and because it's written down for us to study and authenticate. Number two, the word of God, I believe it's true, the word of God, because it's so amazing. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. 
The word of God is amazing. I'm going to share with you some illustrations today. And if you haven't heard them before, they're going to blow you away. And so that's one of the joys I am as pastor. But anyway, how the Bible writing, let's start off with this. How does the Bible writings compare with other religious uh, writings? Now, maybe the two main ones would be Buddha and Mohammed, right? Islam. So the Buddhist Bible was written by one man, Buddha. The Quran was written by one man, Mohammed. Now, Mohammed, after he began writing the Quran, he lived 23 years. And he died at the age, he started writing at the age 40. He died when he was 63. And then much of his writing, you may not know this, was that he left behind, they compiled it, they complex, compiled it, they collected, and now we have the Koran, the writings of Mohammed, which is equivalent to their Bible, right? Now the Buddhist. And the Quran, both of them came from one man in a short period of a lifetime. So during a lifespan, you might say. Now, how does that compare with the Holy Word of God? You ready? God used 40 different men, like secretaries, to write down the Bible over a period of 1500 years sir. and it began in 1480 bc to 70 a.d some date revelation 90 but anyway it's not enough to worry about but about 1500 years some say 1600 and then we're equivalent about but anyway this is an amazing miraculous fact that the bible is unified that the Bible is harmonized, the Bible is without error, and without discrepancies. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, imagine a medical book written under the same circumstances. 40 different doctors over a period of 1,500 years. While George Washington was bled to death, right. they thought he was getting rid of bad spirits out of him. Yeah. So they bled him to death. They, they, that'll kill you. You lose your blood. Things like that. They have changed medical science so many times. Hygiene, sanitary, operations, things. It's just changing every day. Look how many times it's changed in your life. And you was taught as a child, this was right. Now they say, no, that's not right anymore. So you see, imagine 40 years, 40 doctors over 1,500 years. What kind of book would that be? Would it be in harmony, unified? I don't think so. So anyway, uh, can you even in this generation get 40 doctors to agree? Look at the controversy over the... COVID. Look at the controversy over vaccines. Look at the controversy over masks. Can you? Well, I mean, we're split right down the middle. My heart, one of my heart doctors pushing and pushing and pushing for me to get a vaccine. I said, I have breast issues. He said, I know. I said, if this nation's divided 50 50. He said, I know. <laughs> anyway, I said, I got antibodies and uh, I am safe. So he said, oh, good. So anyway, this proves divine inspiration that the Bible was written and comes out on the other side unified without contradiction unless the translator or the publisher messes it up, but not the original word of God Amen. and so forth. The Bible is the word of God. It is the greatest proof 
that the Bible is the word of God. Now, here's some facts to consider, and I got to hurry. I'm only going to hit the one part of it this morning. I can preach on this for you. But here's some facts to consider. Think about some of the people, some of the holy men that God used to pin down Scripture. They're not the author. They're the recorder. Stenographer, however you want to call them. A scribe. Anyway, think of the great Isaiah. Isaiah, do you know that's one of the greatest books in the world? Amen. And, uh, but it was Isaiah who wrote about the virgin birth. 700 years before Christ was born. Amen. Fulfilled Christ. Amen. What about Micah? Well, Micah, you might like this. <laughs> Micah, 700 years before it was fulfilled, Micah gave the city or town that Jesus was born. Amen. 700 years, a little hamlet of Bethlehem. Now, David, David is one of the greatest messianic prophets. And one thousand, David was 1,000 years before Christ. And he described in detail Christ on the cross. Did he not? For example, Psalm 22. Yeah. But anyway, did you know that he wrote that prophecy? 500 years before there ever was crucifixion, before it ever existed. So the first recorded crucifixion in history is 497 BC. And David wrote about it a thousand BC. Isn't that amazing? Amen. The Bible's amazing. Amen. And then, uh, David also said they would gamble for his clothing, many other things. Now, Daniel, the great prophet Daniel, which was instrumental in bringing the wise men to the birth of Jesus, Daniel, 500 BC, he talked about an empire that would rise up over the earth, and this empire would be cut off suddenly and would become four different empires, and then it would become only two empires, and then it would become one empire, and the last empire, the Messiah of Christ, would be born, and so forth. This prophecy was made 500 years before Christ. Now, who are we talking about here? Alexander the Great, 300 BC, he comes on the scene. He arises and becomes the greatest empire in the world. He sat down and cried that he had no more kingdoms to conquer. And he suddenly was cut off and dies at the age of 32. Then he had four great generals under him. They divide up this massive empire into four kingdoms. Okay? Then two of these join, and as a result, in the end, they become the great Roman Empire during the very period that Jesus was born as the Messiah. And this was predicted 500 years ago. BC. Now, the mathematical, are you listening? The mathematical odds for the prophecies to be so precisely accurate are astronomical. Isaiah, Micah, Zechariah, David, Daniel, and so forth, hundreds of years before it happened. 100 years before Christ was born. Now, 
this by itself is positive evidence the Bible is true Amen. and it Amen. is the word of God. Amen. The Bible has stood the test of time, languages, culture, hate, and opposition has never been proved to be false. Never false to be 2,000 years since Christ and 35 years since the inspiration process began back there. There's been no book studied more, scrutinized more than the Bible, the more than any other book in the world. And the Bible always comes out the winner. No one has been able to disprove the Bible in any way, thank God. They always end up wrong. Many of the greatest skeptics and critics, we've showed you films of their and their books and so forth. Many of the greatest skeptics, some of them atheists, devout atheists, are infidels, unbelievers. Many of the greatest skeptics and critics have set out to prove the Bible is wrong. Instead, they proved it was right and got converted and become Christians and defenders of the word of God. Amen. That's a fact. The Bible is beyond amazing. You've probably heard of the tremendous infidel named Voltaire. A lot of the liberals like to quote him. Voltaire. He was an infidel, unbeliever. And he uh, predicted that the Bible would disappear off the earth uh, in a hundred years, right? A hundred years later, he's dead. Yeah. And his house, they're using it to print Bibles. Praise God. The Bible's still here, by the way. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to share with you today one of my uh, favorite all time illustrations. I, I love illustrations, but this is what got to be up there, one of my very favorite. And uh, I shared it years ago. And some of you may have been here, and maybe not know the rights were here. I don't know who else maybe, maybe. But anyway, I'm going to share it again. And this time I'm going to go into a little more detail. All right. I don't know if you've ever heard of Dr. Peter Stoner. He was a professor emeritus of science, not theology, science at the Westmont College. Now, this science professor. He did a study with 600 students, university students, to, uh, and what his study did, the result of his study, was certified by the American Scientific Affiliation, which is, by the way, not a Christian organization, okay? So we see their task. What are the mathematical odds that Jesus filled all the 53 messianic prophecies? At which included there were 300 references besides. Well, they didn't take long to find out, man, this is too big, too massive a task. So they reduced it to eight primary prophecies that had historical records verifying the fulfillment, okay? So, eight primary historical records. Eight Old Testament Jewish Messianic prophecies that history said Jesus fulfilled. Now, what do you think they come up with? What did they find was the mathematical odds that it could be that could happen? Are you ready? One out of ten to the seventeenth power, the seventeen zero, which comes out to be in mathematical terms one hundred quadrillion. Quadrillion. Now. That's a number too big to comprehend in our human mind. 
So they knew that. People would not understand what that meant. So they came up with an illustration to help you and I better understand. And they put it into square feet. And so they used the great state of Texas as an illustration. Now, Texas has 267, 339 square miles. And it has seven, 7,488, 7 million, or wait a minute, 7,408,000 trillion square feet. Still too big to understand. They said, this is their illustration, cover the entire state of Texas, every inch of it, with whatever, with silver dollars. And then come back and cover it again and again and again. So you have all over the state thickness of two feet of silver dollars. Okay. Are you are you with me? So anyway, what are the odds? What what does it mean by odds in case you don't know? Odds. If you took 10 pieces of paper. You put them in a hat, you mark one of the pieces of paper, you shuffle them all up, you blindfold the person, he has one out of 10 chances of picking the paper with the mark on it. That's odds, okay? Now back to our illustration, why I believe the Bible is the word of God. If uh, you would cover Texas, with silver dollars, stacked two foot high, put a mark on one of them, put a mark on one of them, you could come from north, south, east, or west. What are the odds you would find, and you mix them up, make it work, but forget about mixing them up, but what are your odds of finding that one mark Silver dollars. That's a hundred quadrillion. That's the same odds of Jesus fulfilling eight prophecies hundreds of years ago. That's what they come out with the mathematics, feeding it into their computers and, and all. Same odds for Jesus. Eight messianic prophecies confirmed by historical data. Now the results of a, this is the result. Let's remember, I'm not, this is non-Christian. It's in the Christian college. This is the Westmont College. They certified by the scientific uh, al uh, alliance. So it's a scientific study, not a theological study. That's why I say to them, that's just one story, one illustration. The Bible is so amazing. Now let me start on this. Let me start on this. And I'll finish with this partial point. I know the Bible is true, the word of God, because the Bible says so, and it is written. Number two, because it's so amazing. And number three, I know the author personally. He lives within my heart. He changed my life. He's real. More real to me than my dear wife and you, dear Christians. I know the Bible's author personally. Now, the Bible had 40 writers, but only one author. Amen. And that's the Lord God. Now, no human being could write such a perfect book as the Bible. But the Holy Spirit moved on 40 holy men of God and gave them what to write. The Holy Bible is summed up in one person and the, his blessed name is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now God created every person 
with a body, soul, and spirit. Amen. And he created you within your body with the, the capability of receiving Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit into your spirit. Amen? Amen. That's another, another basic miracle. Turn with me to John 5, 39. John 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, inspired writing, for in them you think you have eternal life. The scriptures don't say, but he said they're writing of me. Christ is the one that saves you. The Bible doesn't say Jesus does. See, they were dependent on their religion, and Jesus exposed that. You're trusting the wrong thing. He said, I'm the one you should be trusted in, and so forth. He said, uh, that you will not come to me that you might have life. So why? They didn't believe he was the Messiah. And so they couldn't be saved until they changed their heart. But anyway, I want you to, want you to see this. That Jesus himself verified the Bible as the word of God. And what is the greatest way, do you think, that Jesus verified the Bible? I want to give you a suggestion. If Jesus had been a fake, imposter, fraud, or charlatan, he could have made one statement different than he made. He could have said, well, I'm going to rise from the dead spiritually. Heretics are teaching that kind of doctrine today. A false doctrine. Amen. One reason I'm a fundamentalist, I believe in the bodily resurrection Amen. of Jesus Christ Amen. because he says, Amen. the Amen. Bible says. Amen. And I hope you get that engraved in your soul. Amen. So when, when his, let's say they said, well, he just died spiritually. And so they go into the tomb. They find in that tomb his remains. And uh, they said, see, there's his remains. He didn't rise from the grave. They said, oh, yes, he did, but he did it spiritually. You see how that would undermine everything about Christianity? All oh, the resurrection is so important. Now, Jesus was no fake. He was no charlatan. He said he would rise again bodily. Now, in comparison, over 2,000 years, Mohammed remains in the tomb. Buddha remains, his remains remain in the yes. tomb. These are facts. 2,000 years, no archaeologist or anyone else has ever been able to find the remains of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he arose, he's in Amen. heaven. But that's a historical, scientific fact. And someone said, well, he wasn't dead. Now, how foolish is that? I have medical journals that the best of doctors have studied out all the data in the Bible on the crucifixion and summarized that he definitely died on the cross. Right. Now, right. some say he wasn't dead, but I remind you, he bled out every drop, and the last blood was gathered in the pericardium, and the soldier ran the spear up in his side releasing that last little pocket of blood. So there was no blood left in the body of Jesus Christ. The life of the body is the blood. So Jesus died. And that when that centurion put that fear in, the doctor said that was post-mortem certification. And in Roman law, that was legal certification of death, right? right? Legal certification. So doctors have studied the facts. They've documented it, that Jesus died on the cross. Then three days later, up from the grave, he arose. Jesus' death and resurrection was predicted. And do you doubt the resurrection? Let me close with seven questions I want to ask you again. You say, well, I, I believe 
the Bible is the word of God. It proves that it's the word of God. But what if you said, I don't believe it? Then I want to ask you, can you prove to me any way, shape, form, fashion that the Bible is not the word of God? Can you prove it? What would you think you use to prove it? So turn the question around to these skeptics. These atheists and infidels. And so I want to give you seven questions to ask a person who doubts or disbelieves the Bible. Okay? Number one, if it wasn't true, the prophecies and fulfillment, how did Christ arrange to be born to a specific family? And his le legal, certified, Lineage is in the Bible, both Matthew and Luke. Amen. How, number two, how did he arrange to be born in a specific city? Now, his parents lived in Nazareth, but they had to travel to Bethlehem to pay taxes. She was fully ready to deliver. They'd have never done that unless they had to. So they travel, rough journey. They get into Bethlehem the night of the birth. But anyway, it was predicted he would be born there, and his parents never lived there before. How did that get away? Then number three. Um, and she gave birth to Shirai. Number three, how did he arrange his own death specifically by crucifixion, which was a Roman form devised by the Greeks? And it was prophesied hundreds of years before. Number four, it was prophesied that he would die between two, between two. How did he arrange that? Amen. Number five. How did he arrange that he was going to be crucified on the Passover, the exact day Jews were sacrificing Passover lamb? How did he arrange that? Number six. How did he arrange to have the executioner break the legs of the two criminals on right. each side, but not his own? How did he arrange that? Number seven. How did he arrange that the executioner would gamble for his clothes? See, this is just a few of the prophecies around Jesus. And there was 53 of them that are on the side. And some of them have to do with this second advent when he comes again. So, if you can believe in the first coming, Amen. you'll be able to believe in the second. Amen. Amen. Thank God this word is true. Amen. We have a reliable source of faith. Amen. Faith comes by hearing here by the word of God. God breathed into words out of the mouth through breath comes word. When God uttered his words through the Holy Spirit to these men, they contain the breath of God. Amen. That's amazing. Inspired by God. If it's inspired, it's in him. In power. In everlasting. Amen. God does it. Do you believe Amen. with all your heart? The Bible is yeah. the very word of God. How many believe that? Raise your yeah. hand. Live and die on that conviction. Yeah. You know what a conviction is? Something you believe in won't change even to save your life. Worth dying for. Worth dying for. Amen. Yeah. We have a source reliable faith. The word of God. 
I know there's discrepancies in the translation. Publishers made mistakes and things like that. I know a lot of the old English words have been changed into more modern words. That means that doesn't disavow the Bible like the critics want to say. Oh my, I don't know. So there's over 300 errors in the King James Version. You know what he was talking about? Hips and hands, pronouns, and some, some of them things we don't use anymore. And I realize this King James Version that we use today is not the original King James Version because we probably today couldn't read it the way it was printed. No words and so forth. So be careful what you say. But the word of God has been preserved Amen. and been changed. But the new King James, yeah. it changes. Yeah. Adds to it, takes away. So be careful because many good men are using the new King James today or the new uh, the NIV or so forth. Be careful. I'm staying with this till I die. Amen. Because I have my confidence in this, and I've spent most of my life studying it out. Good and bad arguments. I've got a whole library shelf, big shelf, of critiquing the scripture. But I have never seen any disprove to me the Bible. They're not valid. It's hearsay. It's conjecture. It's not the very word of God. Amen. That's what it is. Let us pray. What's God saying to your heart this morning? How does God want you to respond to this? Does he want you to be a living witness of his word, of his saving gospel message? And you stand and live and die and contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Will you be one of those for the remnant of the last day that are not compromised, that are not bowed to the God of this world and that will any kind of bail in it? But be true and faithful to God no matter what, live or die. Be true, be faithful to God in Jesus' name. Amen.